Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a follow-up to our initial air-cooled, no top hat, Ghost S1 build with the Zen 2 or Ryzen 3000 series 3700X 8-core CPU. Our primary goal here is to give you an idea of what thermals can be achieved in this 8.2 liter sandwich style small form factor case without resorting to top hats, water cooling, or other mods. To review, we are cooling the 3700X with our Noctua NH-L12S with bent heat pipes. The heat pipes are bent in such a way to lower the overall height and allow for enough clearance to install the side panel. Out of the box, the L12S has a height of 70 millimeters, but needs to be shorter to meet the 66 millimeter limit of the Ghost. We have a slim 120 millimeter fan pulling air in from behind the fins towards the motherboard. Now, this barely wedges in between the fins and the RAM heat spreaders. I was anticipating using a 92 millimeter fan due to low RAM clearance after the bending, but we got lucky here. I'm not even using the metal retaining clips to hold the fan in place. It's truly wedged in there. We also have a second 120 millimeter low profile fan at the bottom of the case in exhaust orientation. This is to encourage negative pressure airflow or to help air to be drawn into the case via the side panel ventilation. This would work much better in practice if we had a top hat with fans exhausting out of the top of the case as well, but today we are just focusing on air cooling the 3700X with no top hats. Before we dive into my settings and results, it is important to have at least a basic understanding of the variables that have changed in the 3000 series of Ryzen processors. There is a handful of new power and overclocking terms and settings that can be confusing even to those with the previous experience on past-gen Ryzen platforms thanks to some similar naming conventions. To make matters worse, different motherboards may make use of these features differently and have different default presets for these settings. This isn't meant to be an in-depth guide on these new variables, but just to make you aware that there are different paths you can take to meet the thermal power and CPU frequency goals for your build, whether you are after maximum performance or have specific thermal and noise threshold goals in mind. Gamers Nexus has an excellent guide on this topic. Using the Ryzen Master software may be the best and most consistent method for tweaking CPU settings, but today we're strictly going to use the BIOS settings in this test. With that said, the 3000 series CPUs are offering up impressive performance right out of the box but they are also more difficult to manually choose the proper combination of parameters to squeeze even more performance or for dialing in thermals while also getting accurate reporting on what the CPU is actually doing. For example, voltages and clock speeds are known to get reported incorrectly in HWFO. With that out of the way, let's dive into our baseline setup. The MSI B450i motherboard is running the latest BIOS as of this recording enabling XMP to pull in the correct factory, system RAM speeds and timings, and changing the Infinity Fabric to 1600 are the only memory changes made. We have PBO enabled in manual mode, with PPT being the only value we are adjusting today. Ambient room temperature was slightly cooler for today's testing at about 64 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius. Fan curves have been left to MSI's factory settings. The latest Ryzen chipset drivers have been installed. At idle, CPU temps are normally between 32 and 37 degrees Celsius at the Windows desktop, and noise levels were measured at about 40 decibels, two to three inches from the CPU side of the case. To stress the 3700X, we ran Cinebench R20 multi-core as well as Blender Render using the BMW demo model. During these runs, with PBO left at auto, CPU reached as high as 70.8 degrees Celsius and fans were brought up to speed for an audible readout of about 49 decibels. R20 scores consistently fell in the 4600s. Without stressing the CPU and performing CPU intensive tasks, the Ryzen Master software reports down clock speeds as well as actively sleeping some cores as designed. From here, we adjusted PPT values in increments of 10 to give us Cinebench results at 65, 75, 85, 95, and 100 watts. Our 65 and 75 watt settings brought noise and max temperature levels down considerably without much compromise to our Cinebench scores. If a quiet system is the primary goal, I would likely settle between a 65 and 75 watt PPT value with the current cooling configuration. 
CPU frequency was likely boosting around 4.2 GHz during these tests, but I didn't pay much attention here knowing that the software reporting is currently buggy. If you check out other reviewers' max effort manual overclock results, we are really not that far behind with what PBO is offering right out of the gate, especially factoring in our limited cooling solution with the top hatless ghost. In conclusion, AMD is doing some pretty cool new things here with PBO. For those not interested in dialing in the perfect OC but want the most out of your CPU, you'll likely be able to get the majority of the way there with just PBO. Big frequency gains past the factory boost are just not a thing with this generation of processors. Manual OC results may only be marginally better. You may also end up tweaking more settings and operating less efficiently, and as always, your mileage may vary on how lucky you were with the silicon lottery. We will take another look at thermals and performance when we add top hats to the Ghost S1 in future videos. I hope this video was useful to you, and if so, please consider subscribing if you have not done so already, as well as hitting that like button. I do appreciate the support.